Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Are You Garbage Comedy Podcast. Please take a second to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you get the episodes as they come out. Thanks a lot. Hey, gang, it's your old pals, Uncle Hank and Kippy Kevin James Ryan. Special announcement, the Are You Garbage Patreon is alive. Oh, baby, it is up and running, clean living. Go to patreon.com slash Garbage, where you can get exclusive content. We're going to have bonus episodes every week. We're going to have stuff... Uh, me and Foley from the Hard Feelings Archive. We're going to do live streams. The whole nine yards. Get in while you can. Buy low, sell high, what they say. So check it out, everybody. Go to patreon.com slash garbage. We need this! Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite new podcast. This is Are You Garbage, the show where we sit down with your favorite comedians and find out if they grew up classy or if they grew up absolute trash. I am your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day here in Bluebell, Pennsylvania, coming at you from my mom's basement. And I can't lie, the old broad can still make a meatloaf. I'm going to tell you that right fucking now. My co-host is hiding out at an undisclosed location somewhere on the southern shore of New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, the brains behind the operation, the bookkeeper, Mr. Kevin James Ryan, everybody. Hey, gang, happy to be here. Still down here, king of the boardwalk. Can't <laughs> fucking stop me, baby. Come get smell my the, belt if you want it. Smell I'm the, the only funnel cake from here. Buddy, the, uh, I, I, for a while, I was the only guy down here, but it's, <laughs> dude, they, just, they just opened the beaches and jaws, dude. This thing is flooded with people now. Ooh, you're going to um, be reporting on people, trying to get them out of town, fucking I, tearing it up down there. I'm a local, dude. I got jersey plates now and everything. <laughs> I traded them in. <laughs> um, but happy to be here, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you for um, all the reviews on iTunes, all the subscribers on YouTube. Full videos available on YouTube. Please rate, review, subscribe. Also, if you're new to the show, go check out our previous guests. We've had fucking... If you're a comedy fan, I don't know how the fuck you're not listening to this. We have Mark Norman, Joe List, Bobby Kelly, Louis J. Gomez. Fucking, I mean, it goes on and on. Paul Verzi. So go check it out, everybody. Thank you. Very nice, Kevin. Thank you so much. And we have an absolute, very, very special guest. We are so excited to have him here on the podcast today. You've seen him in Trainwreck, It Had to Be You, Inside Amy Schumer, Difficult People, Tarantula, Drunk Parents, not to mention 51 episodes of the hit show Billions. He has a Comedy Central half hour. He's appeared on Conan, At Midnight, Night Train, What's Your Fucking Deal? This Is Not Happening, This Week at the Comedy Cellar, Late Night with <laughs> Seth Meyers, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, not to mention he's got an HBO special out right fucking now called Son of Gary, and he is the co-host of the amazing show, The Bonfire. Ladies and gentlemen, the big question on everybody's mind today is, is he garbage? Give it up for the one, the only, Mr. Dan Soder, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that, that intro was uncomfortable for me. <laughs> it looked like it was uncomfortable for him, too. I thought he was going to run it's, out of breath midway through. It sucks when you have to hear all the things that you did okay on. <laughs> 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 ah, fuck, that was, uh, that was all right. Uh, you could have just said HBO and Bonfire. and uh, <laughs> 51 episodes, I was like, damn. Yeah, yeah buddy, what do you mean? What are you talking about? You got fucking uh, SAG insurance, I'm looking at it. Dude, I, uh, that was the closest I've ever felt to winning the lottery. Was <laughs> as, a, as a hypochondriac, getting SAG oh, yeah. insurance, I was like, let me just go. I would, honestly, the first year I had it, I'd be like, let me just go get checked up. Yeah, dude, uh, that time I mean, that stuff's like bulletproof. Yeah, I, just, I was just like, let me go get checked up. And they're like, what do you want? And I was like, I don't know. Let me go to an ENT. <laughs> and like, yeah. And I was like, dude, this is fucking what's up. It was, yeah. like, look, it was like getting a credit card for the first time. You're like, yeah, sure. You're looking at it like it's an expensive, uh, expensive restaurant menu. Like, hmm. Yeah. Excellent. So I think I answered your question there because health insurance <laughs> is a fucking Bentley to me. I'm yeah. just like, oh, my God. Sometimes this hurts. Can you touch it? And then just having a. <laughs> Just having a doctor with firm hands be like, you're okay. And I'm like, oh, this is so nice. The first year I was in SAG, I thought that you just got it automatically. And then I find that you have to make a certain amount to yeah. get it. Yeah. And fucking then at the end of the year, I was like, all right, well, I'm sure I have enough. I look at, you got to make 17 grand. I was fucking 15,500 oh. short. <laughs> fucking first oh, yeah. year, oh, 25 undie. 
Dude, I uh, I didn't even think about it because when I joined, I knew that. And they were like, you need to make a certain amount. And I had to join. I was a forced join mm-hmm. because I used to work at um, WXRK in New York, which was K-Rock. It was free FM, and then it turned to K-Rock, mm-hmm. and I was an overnight DJ there. And that was AFTRA. And then oh, yeah. I never paid my after dues. I just never paid them. They were like, you got to pay your after dues. And I was like, living hand to mouth. <laughs> yeah, no way. Doing dude. comedy. I was uh, a waiter at Dos Caminos and I was doing overnight shifts. And that was my money. My main in source was K Rock, but I was doing, I want to say, two or three shifts a week. So maybe I was making $400, $500. And I'm like, I'm not turning around. I'm giving <laughs> you assholes fucking 300 of that. All of that, yeah. So for two years, I just didn't pay after it. And then I did. Uh, live at Gotham on Comedy Central, and they're like, we're going to give you a pass. SAG was like, we're going to give you a pass. You have to pay SAG, but you don't have – I was like, great. And then I did uh, – I Amy Schumer put me in a sketch in season one of Inside Amy, and also I was supposed to do Conan. And then I get a call from my manager, and he's like, hey, have you paid your set, your after dues? And I'm like – Yeah, they find you, man. They fucking – you don't think you're on yeah. anybody's radar. Dude, they fucking think was, find you. Never thought about it. And he's like, did you ever pay that? And I was like <laughs> – no why and he's like you they're holding you i I wasn't allowed to film amy show they held me they were like amy texted me and she's like you fucking moron you don't pay your dues and i was like and then they were like hey we're gonna block you from conan and filming your comedy central half hour unless you pay it so i had to like get that scratch together yeah dude i had to borrow some money because i I wasn't making any i was doing stand-up but it was like you know i'm making shit and i was like fuck oh fuck and then three thousand dollars. So I never even thought of insurance. <laughs> and then billions comes around and they're like, you, you know, you're eligible for insurance. <laughs> I, was like, right. I was on Cobra. I was yeah. like, yeah, all right, whatever. Because I used to. You got a I, monocle on all of a yeah. sudden. You're like, I oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a specialist. I have an. <laughs> I have a specialist at a PD. I get to know the words. I don't yeah. even know words for doctors. He got, he's got referrals out the ass, baby. Yeah. He's wiping his Someone ass. Someone explain to me what a dermatologist does. Yeah, Thank dude. You. You, you, just, you should for, use uh, simple terms for me, like head doctor. <laughs> like, this guy's a head doctor. And I'm like, so you do all the head stuff. You do everything up here? Gotcha. Yeah. You <laughs> There's dudes much- that just do the skin. Did you know yeah. that? They just do the skin. Dude, I went to a tummy doctor and got to talk to him. <laughs> it was pretty good. But it was. Uh, he put a flashlight really- down my throat and told me I was sick. Well, when I moved, when I was waiting tables, one of the guys I worked with, my buddy Eli, was like, hey, you can go to, this is like 2007, he's like, you can go to um, Bellevue and show them how much money you make, and then it's a non-profit hospital, so Uh. so they they have, or they have like a non-profit wing, I forget what it was, but you go into this room, I showed her one of my pay stubs from from waiting tables, she gives me this red card. And I could go see a doctor for twenty dollars, and it was like there, that was it. It was just twenty dollars. I think it was just twenty dollars. But dude, the waiting room oh my God. <laughs> was like it. It was fucking insane. It was yeah, one dude. of those things where you're like, I've compared it to the ca- cantina in Star Wars. <laughs> that's the only thing. Where yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. You just see people with like giant moles on their head, and you're like, oh my god. And then they're looking at me, clean cut white dude, and they're like. What are you fucking doing here? Yeah, you're like, here to audit the place. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm undercover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Pfizer. I'm just here yeah. to get some names and numbers. I'm you're big, doing a what would you do for ABC News? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> our, our undercover boss. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm the owner I'm of the hospital. Hosp- I'm a hospital. Hi, my name is Dan Hospital. I own the hospital. You have like oh, a big uh, fake beard on. It looks terrible. Yeah, fucking yeah. Dan Bellevue. Yeah, <laughs> hello. My name is Daniel Bellevue. My family's owned Bellevue Hospital. We've been... We've been knocking weirdos in the side of the head for four generations. That's what I thought you were going to say. I thought you could go to Bellevue, but you had to, like, fake that you were crazy. You had to go in there and, like, shit nah, on the man. floor to get to see a doctor or something so, like that. So I've had, I've had like, acid reflux, like, a long, long time. And I used to Me drink. too. Yeah. And I used to Did you have it when you were a kid? Because I had yeah. it when I was a kid and didn't realize it. No, I used to. And like I would just be, like, in sixth grade, like, what the fuck? Like, I used to like the, f- this is kind of fucked up and sick, uh, but I used to like the feeling of heartburn when I was a kid. Uh. I was like. I was like, no, what's up? What's up with that? <laughs> and, then, and then as I got older, I, I started smoking when I was 12. And then I started uh, like heavily smoking when I was 14, 14 or 15. And 16, I was a pack a day until I was 30. And God, what the, it's always, the I never, I know, yeah. I never understood how kids would be like, yeah, I smoke a pack a day. I'm like, 
Well, what are you smoking at, at lunch break and then like nah, 15 the after you get out of school? Yeah, I'd rip two before the bus. Mm-hmm. Bus would pick me up at like 7.15. Dude, morning was, six as a teenager was fucking dude. A-OK, dude. <laughs> That's so, fucking A-OK. Garbage, dude, bro, I'm talking preteen, not yeah. a teenager. I'm talking about my, me and my boy Byron would sit every morning. He'd come over to my house, and in one hand, he'd have a Salem light, and in one hand, he'd have a Marlboro light that he ganked from his mom and his stepdad. Yeah. And then he'd come over, and he'd go, pick a hand, and I'd pick a hand, and then that was your cigarette. And then we would go to the bus stop at 12. 13 mm -hmm. and just sit and smoke cigarettes before the bus i always i, I had this thought recently but like <laughs> how did that bus driver not be like are you, are you, are you just fucking smoking dude, the 90s was wide open dude you would dude. see a kid smoking you'd be like yeah whatever man you used to buy kids cigarettes out front I of the to, out dude, front of the my, store I, I swear to god my fucking thing in eighth grade was on friday after school i would ride the bus home with all my shithead friends everyone would go drop their backpacks off i would grab my mongoose and then i would Ooh, ride it so sweet. Too, goose dude, kid I, not too whoa. shabby by the way self-paid self kennedy over here holy nah, shit I, nah, Fuck you guys. You guys didn't hustle. I bought that shit myself. <laughs> I promise you. I had a, a the bike the I had before loose, that. Baby. The bike I had before that was an orange mountain bike called uh, Mud and Guts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and remember was, the mud slingers? They were bad news. The mud yeah, it was from Target. My mom uh -huh. bought. They were like toy bikes, not real bikes. It was like it wasn't a, toy. a real bike. Yeah, so when I got the toy. when I got when I got the goose, it was my mom was like, "You got to buy that." And Danny was, Saragusa over here. Dude, yeah. Dude, yeah. <laughs> what was the what was the peg situation on the no bike? Peg. I can afford pegs. I just no had pegs. a goose. I just had the goose, dude. Was it I the silver the one with the black? Yeah. It was that silver. Thing. It was silver with the blue mongoose riding on it. I forget what it was called. They all had names, but um, you know, that bike was man, I fucking even bringing it up right now, I love it. I know. That bike. Dude, having a good I bike as a kid was awesome. <laughs> and I bought it, so it was like that was my bike. You know what I mean? Like it was like your mom, car, dude. Yeah. If my mom was like, fuck you, you're fucking grounded. I'd be like, can't take my fucking bike away. Cause I bought that shit. So. <laughs> I, too. Yeah. Like a disgruntled yeah. employee. Yeah, dude. I, I'll take you know, my break whenever the fuck I want to, Garen. My mom and I would have fights like that. I mean, I'm the only child of a single mom. So it was like, those were our fights every day. But it, this is, I'm just geeked up talking about smoking cigarettes because I used to take my bike. I used to take the goose. <laughs> I usually, I usually go down to Jason Poyle and Nick Myers, Nicky Myers, and we would <laughs> ride up to Circle Doctor Myers. Now, <laughs> uh, I think he's got like a business. I think that I think he's like um one of those like lawn doctors. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like a franchise courses. guy. Oh, like on, oh, oh like on, gotcha. Yeah. I think I, I gotta look it up. I gotta be a better friend to people. A like groundskeeper. Like, He's not a groundskeeper. It's like the step above that. Like yeah, like they, they bring specialists and be like, this is the Kentucky bluegrass. Yeah. You need this outside yeah. the mm. outside the bunker on hole nine, yeah. that kind yeah. of shit. He's the sod whisperer. He, <laughs> just, he, just does. he so we used to ride up to Circle K and then we would ride oh. on Hamden. Circle Hamden. K's trash, yeah. Yeah. That right was on trashy, Hamden. dude. We're not gonna have to ask any fucking questions. <laughs> this guy's telling us everything. Yeah, I'll sing like a canary. Uh, yeah. Right dude, on. it's like we we knocked on his door, he opened up, he's like what took you so long? He yeah. just like spills his beans about being garbage. But we used to ride up, and this was the 90s. This is what you were saying, how wild the 90s were. Mm -hmm. We used to sit on the side. We were 12. Oh, yeah. We were 12 and then 13. And we'd sit on the side of Circle K, and we'd wait for people to walk in. And then with $3 in our hand, we'd go, excuse me, sir, can you buy me a pack of cigarettes? you just ask like that. You're just one mm -hmm. movement. Like, sir, can you please buy me a pack of cigarettes? And I remember every guy that was like, no man i was always like fuck you <laughs> like, yeah. like fuck <laughs> fucking you, pussy shit just yeah. a kid trying to smoke over here dude and the guys that would say yes i was like dude you're the coolest you thought uh, they were the coolest dudes a lot of wife beaters you thought they were the what? coolest fucking dudes now, now i realize what? now i realize what a bizarro perspective <laughs> perspective dude. to have on <laughs> people buying kids heaters yeah. they're just like oh yeah what do you want marlboro reds at 12 years old dude yeah, you because, and, and i'd always specify i'd be like hard pack I, I mean, <laughs> Box. Uh, yeah, you gotta go box. Yeah. You were doing soft pack as a dude. If you're doing soft pack as a 12 year old, you had yeah. other issues. So I don't know if you guys remember this in the 90s, they would put cigarettes on the counter. Cigarettes weren't uh all behind. Kind of vaguely yeah. Oh, they would have like a little display, like they a Winston a display small, or a cool yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's funny you say that because I just remember my um uh, I think it was Nick or Jason had this move where they had a starter jacket, right? And they would like put their hands oh, on I'm shocked. They'd put their hands on the counter and then ask for, you know, for like, hey, what's up with that? Can I get some batteries or yeah, something? And yeah. look, and then, they'd gr and then they'd grab a pack off the thing. 
and, put and it wing in it. There. And then just like put it in their pouch or like put it in the thing and be like, oh, never mind. You know what? I'm going to get out of here. And it was always <laughs> soft packs. Soft packs were the ones that were always on that counter. Wow. So I remember, and I used to put them in M&M minis. Yeah, the, the little M&M cases. Minis. Oh, yeah, I used, that's where I used to put my cigarettes. That are Altoid cases. Oh, yeah. that's pretty sweet. We, we, you did, we did weed in the Altoid case, and then the, that little tube was perfect for Bernie's, dude. It was dude, great. Perfect. Perfect cigarette holder. And then, in fact, I have a scar on my fucking hand, and I don't think you'll be able to see it. I would show you guys if we were in person. It was from when I was in the eighth grade uh, in a, this girl Laura's basement smoking cigarettes with all my friends. And I was burning uh, one of the Eminem mini things. Mm-hmm. The hot plastic fell on my hand. And I was yeah. like, ah, shit. <laughs> and I've had that. I'm 36 years old and I have that shit still on my hand. Yeah, I'm dude. like, oh, fucking piece of shit. Dude, we used to do the same thing. We'd sit outside this place in fucking Village Shires and just at the deli and like wait for this. And the guy, you would always know, he would pull up, he would leave his car on. If somebody was yes. smoking, you always ask them. Mm-hmm. You what always ask the guy smoking. But if, if it's like some 22 year old hopped out of his car, left it running, left you were like, it running. If, you were like this Rush, guy is a fucking mark right here. Yeah. And if he was playing Rush loudly, oh, like, yeah. I could probably get a, you're like, I could probably get this guy to buy me a carton and I don't have the funds. Well, what we would do is we would do the, they were like, I guess this was, I don't know, two, two th- late 90s, I guess, because I'm 33. So they were like 275 maybe three bucks a pack. Yeah. And we would have a five, like somebody would have a $5 bill. We'd be like, hey man, get yours. And you'll, you can like almost get a pack yourself. So you're like getting a free pack of cigs. You're basically giving them $2 to buy you. Like, <laughs> to buy cigs, but we would spin it to another cig smoker. Like, yo, you can, sure. get, you can get yourself a pack. Sure. Yeah. We had a homeless guy that lived behind. Uh, <laughs> he, like, kind of lived behind there, but he would drift. Yeah. He lived behind Grocery Warehouse, which is, like, <laughs> so I grew up in, like, the burbs. I grew up in, like, uh, middle-class suburbs. Yeah. But middle-class kids, I try to explain to people, it's, like, if they're not rich, even if they are rich, but most of the time, middle-class suburbs are bored. They're, like, bored, so they do bad yeah. shit. Yeah. Because they're, like, well, fuck There's nothing to do, Yeah. Yeah, and like every one of my friends' parents, both of their parents worked. Every right. every one yeah. of my friends, both of their parents worked. So it was like this almost there was no cell phones, there was no way of tracking. So it was almost like from three PM to six PM, it was wide open. It was you lawless. Could do whatever you the could, fuck you, you know, wanted wherever to do. you wanted to end up. You just know you kinda had to be back at a certain time. So you're like, if I'm going an hour away, I gotta give myself oh, an hour to get back. Dude, my mom was a totalitarian leader. Like my mom was a fucking I was scared of her. So mm-hmm. I would be like, dude, the th- even if you say 5 p.m. to me, I'm like, whew. <laughs> <'Cause I just laughs> Did you get a chill goes my- down your spine? Yeah. Yeah, but that was when my mom would get, you know, would get home from work. It would be like around 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And so I'd always be like, dude, I got to be home by then. So you'd have the, you know, like the spray the cologne. Fucking oh, night. the dryer sheets we found were a good one. Bounce sheets. Dude. Bounce sheets. You could keep them in your pocket. They never knew. Like you didn't have to. It wasn't over the top either. Yeah. Put it in I a got, paper towel roll, too. You can yeah, put it in a paper put, towel roll and breathe That was this, yeah. To yeah, that's what you yeah. smoke weed in your room. It was um, when that's I started funny. smoking weed consistently at 15, bounce sheets were like. That mm-hmm. was it, dude. Dude, you could walk into school ripped and just have it. And if I dusted with a bounce sheet, I'd be like, I ain't no one's going to Chilling, gonna, dude, yeah. No one's going to tell me I just smoked a blunt in my Honda Accord. <laughs> Mr. The Soda is smelling good today. Very yeah. nice. Good to see it. Dude, the one I got caught with is you could, uh, this is late 90s talk, but you could go online and buy a novel. What this whole podcast idea. is, by the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> it just ends yeah. up talking about the 80s and 90s. Yeah, but if you, you could buy a novelty ID, which was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you bought, this is like, I want to say this is 1999. So you basically take, you go get a passport photo, you know, at like a photo place. You, you mail them a passport photo of you. You buy this novelty ID and they send you back like a driver's license with your photo in it. And this is before the scans and shit. This is before they scanned them. So you just get this ID that said, I was from Connecticut. My name was Daniel Miller. And I was 21 years D. old. D. Mill, baby. Yeah, dude, it's old Danny Mr. Miller. Mr. <laughs> Miller. First thing with Danny. that, I was 16 and I had a fake ID and I went and got a tattoo on my back because uh, I got a tattoo. I got a crucifix in the middle of my back. Of course you did. That's what all a 16 year old knows how to get is a of fucking course. crucifix or their initials. And also, my mom, because my dad and my sister were dead. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to get their tattoo. I'm going to get their initials on my back. So my mom was like, whatever, that's fine. My mom didn't give a fuck. She that's was like, fair that's game, sweet. Yeah. You want to do that? I went to the tattoo. It was the, what was it called? It was right on Iliff in Chambers. 
and it was a, a mini mall tattoo shop called the tattoo shop. I want to say mm -hmm. I was 16 years old and I gave the guy my ID and he's like, cool, man, what do you want? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, was like I want a crucifix with a banner around it. That says, and a soft pack. <laughs> hey, so yeah. I did. I already had that. Come on. I was buying booze at this point. Um, <laughs> and I was like, and uh, with a banner around it that says soda. And he was like, soda. And I was like, oh yeah. Oh, and I started God. like melting down. I was like, it's, my maiden name. Yeah, it's my maiden. I got married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My husband's name is no. I just I like it better. I'm more traditional, you know what I mean? I took so I, I mean yeah. <laughs> um, but then I would buy booze for everybody. Like I would I didn't even really drink. That was the weird thing. I wanted the ID more for cigarettes and porn. Like I that's what I cared about. It was like I want to buy packs of smokes and be able to go buy a fucking VHS of porn at Newsland. So I was like, <laughs> why don't why don't I uh and I started buying booze, and then, like, people wanted to hang out because I had that, you know? Like, yeah, of course. Yeah, all of a sudden, they were like, oh, like, the girls in my grade were calling me being like, hey, we're going to a party, and then they'd be like, people would invite me to the party and be like, hey, can you stop by the liquor stores? I knew my fucking worth, dude. It was, yeah. I, I was just a schmuck that had a fake ID. That's all it was. Dude, I went to this, uh, my mom lives in the apartment complex right by this liquor store. So I drive by it all the time. And it was right on, uh, it, it's now closed, but it was this massive liquor store and I could buy kegs there. That was really big. Mm -hmm. I could buy kegs of beer and we could have keggers and then I could return the keg and I had this fake ID and it fucking worked beautiful. I yeah. didn't even ID me after a while. He just knew me. Yeah, like, just knew up, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah. And I'd buy smokes. I'd buy like two packs of smokes. I never bought multiple brands of cigarettes. I always bought Camel Lights in a box because that's what I smoked. So I wanted to make it look consistent. Like, sure. I'm not going to buy cigarettes for teenagers. I'd rather go do that at a gas station. So I'm not going to not going to ruin the booze connect. You know what I mean? Dude, and this place would got to hedge your bets. Crown Discount Liquors was uh, right. fucking yeah. massive. It was yeah. just this. It was a corner of a mini mall. It was the corner store. And it was just this fucking giant liquor store. And I remember I had like you know, a couple bottles, like vodka, tequila, a Crown Royal bottle. Everyone had given me money. I had like two 12 packs. I like Rolling Rock because, you know, I'm garbage. That's yeah. the whole point of this thing. And I It's always it. a diverse order when you're doing that. When yeah. you're buying liquor for a bunch of kids, it's always a lot of weird red flags. that has got to go off at the dude selling it. Exactly. So you also have to, you have to buy big, small amount of things, buy big. So like if you're going to buy beer, buy all Bud Light. So it looks like yeah. drink. But I had this Rolling Rock. I had it all mixed in. Whatever. The guy behind the, the counter. He didn't give him. He didn't give yeah. a fuck. He knew he me. Uh, yeah. so, knows. so I load up this big box, right? I got this big box of booze and I walk out in front of crown discount liquor and I walk by this gold blazer and I'm just like, whatever. And I go into my car, go to the party, fucking weekend, whatever. Weekend's fine. I, I come to school on Monday and my best friend, Danny is like, Hey dude, coach Anderson, our football oh. coach. He was like, he saw you come out of the liquor store with a box of liquor. And I was like, Oh man. And then I was like, <laughs> I'll make immediately in my mind. I don't care if coach Anderson's mad at me. I don't give a fuck. I, suck yeah. football. I sucked. He didn't give a shit about me. I don't give a shit about him. Mm -hmm. um, what sucked is I knew that blue, I knew that blue crown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I knew yeah, it yeah. did. And then I found out because coach Anderson liked uh, Danny, my best friend. Cause he was on, we were both on a football team, but he liked Danny. And he told Danny, he was like, yeah, I went in there and told him, like, you know, you're oh, what a oh, fucking shit. dick. Yeah, what a you're like, fucking narc, dude. Yeah, but I mean, that is, I guess that is the point of a teacher. Yeah, he is, is, yeah. it, he's in like, charge of children. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> Scumbag doing the right thing. What the now, fuck? Yeah, I, my whole life I've been like, what a piece of shit. Now in my 30s, I'm like, no, that's actually. Yeah, kind of kind of checks out. <laughs> but uh, I never said anything to him about it. Never said anything to him about it. And then there was just one afternoon where he and I are walking. He was a security guard at the high school. And we're just like walking down the hallway. And I had a can of Coke. And I just walked by him. I go, just Coke today, Coach A. Like that. Ah, and and I got right. him to laugh. That's a good move. It. Good and I was move. Like, all right, fuck this. We're out of it. You know? Because <laughs> it was oh, like, that's good. I was going to be like, because part of me, you're scared of adults as a teenager. So you yeah. want to be like, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. But then part of me is kind of like, fuck you for snitching. And then part of me was like, dude, just make fun of it. Who yeah, come on. What the fuck? Yeah. They were teachers were cooler back in the day. Like they like he would he would go in and blow up the spot so you couldn't get it anymore. But you, you could, still could make that joke with them and he would get it. Yeah, he That's would go what to was the awesome about it. Or call my mom. And be yeah, like, so or have you arrested? Which uh, my mom knew I was drinking. So oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck. It's Either. funny. That, we... that, was, that was 
probably the best deal of my setup growing up is once my mom and I made amends when I was 16 and she was kind of like, you can just do, do whatever. whatever you want yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Just don't drive drunk. Don't drive high. Do yeah. it here. Do it here in the garage. Don't do it in the house. Oh, it's be, the be safe. You, uh, hold on. What are the first, did you ever sit on a, did you have a couch in that garage? Uh, no, but we had several lawn chairs. Okay. Oh, that's even worse. I think. <laughs> but hanging out in the garage. And we awesome. had, and we found this thing called the bone phone, which was this old speaker. Dude, I got to look it up to see if you can even see this thing. It's called <laughs> the bone phone. And it was, a uh, uh, a transistor radio that was, um, like a belt of speakers on, uh, covered with this like blue cover, you know, like mm-hmm. a soft blue cover and you attached it to your dog. And so when you would jog, you could jog with your dog. This is like an 80s invention. Like you could jog with, your, jog with your dog while listening to the radio. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck me and my friend Dennis found this, but we had the bone phone. And then the bone phone was just, the, that was the music we played, in, played the in the garage. Yeah. While we were getting fucked up was from the bone phone. You're tuning in to 83.7, the bone. Yeah, dude, you'd be like, you're listening to KS1075. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, the new Nelly. <laughs> yeah. It is getting hot in her, Nelly. It is. It, the garage has no <laughs> ventilation. So, yes, it's very hot in her. Mm-hmm. It's funny. We, we've, had, we've had a pretty eclectic you know, group as far as like backgrounds on the podcast, like city between city kids and suburban yeah. kids. Kevin and I are both suburban kids, yeah. you know, middle class. And there was that, 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 that is what like, you know, brought everybody together. It was boredom and the city kids are fun, but the ones that we relate to more and like the reason we wanted to have you on, like, I, I, I got that vibe from you that you were like, you know, like, I feel like Mike judge wrote yeah. your childhood. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I mean, just that, that boredom, small town kind of shit. That's what really makes the show. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it was a weird situation to be in because my mom is you know educated and, and uh, successful. Like she was a medical malpractice mediator for years. Yeah, and she was fucking super smart and like a badass. Just someone that's kind of like fuck this shit. I'll take care of it, which mm-hmm. is obviously why I was terrified of her. And it was just her and I for most of my life. So mm-hmm. it was like this weird thing where I was growing up in the suburbs. So on the surface, I was like, this is really nice. There's like, you know, I mow the lawn every Saturday. I have a dog. Mm -hmm. I go to school with like a bunch of kids. There's no crime really in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then I would go see my dad and I'd be like, this is white trash (laughs) craziness. Like crazy. I've never related to a scene more than in The Departed when Mark Wahlberg's talking shit to Leo about going to his dad's house on the weekend. Two different accents. I felt like I was like, you motherfuckers stole that from my life. I know. Like, how did you know? Because <laughs> yeah. I would go, I would go to, and I'd only see my dad like once or twice a year. I really only went to visit him where he lived in that lake town where it was super white trash. Probably four times I think I went up there. But every time I was like, it was like three weeks. And you're like, this is fucking <laughs> nuts. <laughs> a, a lake town's pretty garbage. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Yo, Anytime I've you said, have to go up to a lake town, it, that's not a good direction <laughs> to a not a good place. Yeah. yeah north, north lakes. <laughs> north is always gone. bad. But it was, it was funny because I said this on stage one time, but I truly meant it. I was like, if you live near a lake, you either have all the money or none of None. Them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. My grandma moved up there from San Francisco back in 91 to retire. She was like, you know, she's 93 now, but she was like um, retiring. And she, up, you know, up near Clear Lake is like where a lot of people from San Francisco used to go vacation. It was like back, but by back in like the 50s and 60s, they were like, yeah. that's how we go to the lake. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like the Poconos now. In the 50s, the Poconos yes. was fucking, Dude. you go there now, it's fucking, you got a trailer full of meth on you. I've never thought of that till you just said that. Mm-hmm. But the Poconos is East Coast Lake County. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dude, the Poconos is trash now. Yeah, dude, because you go up to Lake County and you're like, this is fucking beautiful. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's beautiful. And then you get alone in a gas station with a guy and you go, <laughs> do I know how to fight? Do yeah. I know how to fight to save my life? Dude, I saw a guy go. I, I've seen so many people ride bikes that aren't doing it for the sport. <laughs> Oh, dude! You know yeah. I mean? like, you Anytime you're riding a bike on a four-lane highway, it's never it's uh, never a good look. And so a I'm grown doing... man on a bicycle outside <laughs> of New York City, you're like, this dude's on hard. Dude, times. especially if it's a BMX bike, it doesn't oh. even have like the mountain bike handles. Dude, if you're, dude, know. if you're a grown man on a BMX bike, 
if you, a broken down mountain bike and, you're, uh, and, and you see the guy in work boots and a heavy <laughs> coat with shorts on, that's a fucking scary it's Definitely with, with a plastic bag on the handlebars, too. So once my grandma retired up there, I just have been going there since I was. And listen, she's got a nice townhouse. She like, yeah. lives by the lake. It's fucking nice where she lives. She retired dad. there, though. That's a little yeah. bit different. Yeah. She retired there, but yeah. my, da- my dad was a wild he was, boy. He was trying to plant a seed there. He was trying oh, to raise man. his flag. My dad was trying to do nothing but drink and fuck up there. Like, that was all my dad. And it was he didn't give a fuck about anything. So it was interesting to have my mom, who's, like, A-type personality, and is like, did you mow the lawn? Did you take out the trash? Did you clean the dog poop? And you're like, yes, mom, I did that. And she's like, all right, you have to read John Steinbeck this summer. And you're like, why do this? And then my dad's like, look, you got heaters on you, brother. Rip it. <laughs> yeah. like, all right, Smoke them right. if you got them, daddy. Yeah, Let's dude, do it. Like, He's like, this is my roommate, Jim. He has a sawed-off <laughs> shotgun under the couch. And yeah, you're like, if you're ever in a pickle. Yeah. Dude, yeah. swear to God, Jim yeah. showed it to me, and I was like, I'm 12. Why yeah. are you doing this? Uh, who's this John Steinbeck motherfucker coming around <laughs> your mom's house? <laughs> yeah, I hear this John. She's hanging out with a John. Yeah, my uh, – but Grapes of my, my nuts, I'll tell you that. <laughs> my mom also dated, so that was also like a thing where you saw a bunch of rando dudes kind of come in. You know what I mean? And that's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. weird thing because – I was always jealous of my friends with married parents, not because their parents were married, just because their weirdos weren't coming over. Coming, just parents. hanging around the house, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's like, of, it would always be like, uh, my mom, my, my parents are divorced, it'd be like 9.30. She's like, yeah, Joe's going to stay over. I'm like, oh, okay. dude, the worst was the fucking, hey, Tom is, uh, Tom's going to be here for breakfast tomorrow. Do you want anything special? And you're like, <sighs> don't fucking bury the question. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> don't bury the question like you're making me a special breakfast because I'm yeah. special. It's because you're uh, really dick down. Yeah. Hey, you and Tom really seem to be hitting it off. What do you say we have breakfast in the morning? Oh, yo, yo a story a story that I completely forgot about until I got into therapy was my sixth birthday party. My parents split up when I was five and my dad moved to San Francisco. So it was just me and my mom and Aurora. And it was like my sixth birthday and Batman was in theaters. The original Batman. Mm-hmm. Tim Burton's. So it was all I wanted was Batman. It was like, if you get... That was all I gave a shit about on my birthday. It was like fucking Batman. And I remember my sixth birthday, my mom and her boyfriend, Tom, (laughs) fucking, my mom got me the utility belt from Toys R Us, the Batman utility belt. So I'm already like, yeah, what a fucking day. I was like, maybe Tom will, uh, you know, we'll play Batman or whatever. And then I noticed my, my mom and Tom are getting a little giggly, right? And then I noticed that they're just fucking slamming mimosas. And they just got hammered on the morning of my birthday when I was sick. <laughs> and I just remember feeling that uncomfortable feeling of like, like what? Huh? are you guys fucking drunk? <laughs> like, I was like six and it's like, that's why it's crazy to me when, with uh, people that didn't grow up around alcoholics where they're just kind of oh. like, I saw my mom drunk and it scared me. And I was like, you dude, bitch ass. I knew dude, my mom I le- was hammered by the time I was eight. I was like, oh, Trish is fucking in the bag. Dude, I legit had my dad gave me the don't drink and drive conversation while we <laughs> were both drinking in a pickup truck That's what's up. he was literally like i was like 17 he like handed me a beer and he already had an open one between his legs and he's like yeah. you shouldn't be drinking and driving i'm like while there's open containers my man let's do it dude we moved we went we bought like a uh, couch in boulder when i was like 10 and my stepdad nick and i went and got it in a u-haul and he was like do you want to drink an o'doul's and i was like what and he's like it's a non-alcoholic beer and i was like okay and he's like i don't know i want one so i'll buy two and you can have one i was 10 <laughs> I was like, yeah. like sitting there like a nom vet <laughs> i was like yeah, sure man whatever and i distinctly remember driving on back from boulder to denver drinking a fucking old duels with my stepdad nick and i was like now i'm like what the That's fuck crazy. Yeah. imagine do imagine if you did that to a 10 year old right now be give a 10 year old give a 10 year old old duels and be like this Same. you know you, you'll get used to the taste of beer later yeah you, know, like, you give a 10 year old a dr pepper now you're fucking going <laughs> like, that yeah. has that has high fructose corn syrup you yeah. can't do that oh That's my god funny. i love it all right we got to get into some questions here True. um i mean you gave us everything and I love- a, that was a lot of information it's gonna be hard to dig your way out of that hole but and i'm honestly it like gives me like a warm feeling that like my impression of like how i thought you grew up yeah that you grew up like that like yeah, i just I, mean, I just like i said like I, using the mike judge reference is like the biggest thing that i can get it close to that's the vibe i got because you know what else too when i, when, when I thought about dan coming on you know what dan wears the fucking hell out of have you ever seen Dan Soder in a t-shirt and an open flannel? Oh, that is 
funny. You. you wear that like fucking Han Solo, and I was that's like, this, this guy's I, fucking garbage. That's blue and collar. I love it. That's blue, damn it. blue collar. Pro- oh, sorry, go. What were you going to say? Blue I was going to say that's blue collar prom right there. Dude, mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I think you're pushing me back to button downs, open button downs. I Dude. might have to buy some fucking flannels. And Jay was rocking some flannels before the teen, and I think I might have to start doing it. I, all right, all right. I feel good. All right. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me tell you something, buddy. If they were cast in office space now, we'd be standing around like Ron Livingston who? Yeah. That's, fucking, that's Dan Soders right oh, there. Dude, you you, you wear you a nice your... T-shirt and an open fucking button down. I'll tell you that. I believe you get your ass kicked for saying something like that. <laughs> I, uh, I would love to, what I think I'm going to bring back after the teen is a uh, thermal long sleeve under t-shirts. Oh, dude. That's dude I was my, just thinking about that. That's I one saw of my picture, questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get into it. All right. Yeah. All let's right. get into some questions here. Uh, let's start. I'm going to start with a cup, just a couple of the basics. Cause we have a sure. lot of specific questions that we wrote for you. Just take me into your mom's house. Uh, it was a single family home or was it an apartment? No, my mom bought a house. My mom, okay. my mom's a get shit done kind of person. I think that's the reason why I have such a good work ethic is because my mom was like, sometimes would put her work before, you know, like I was just yeah, a, before I her was, son. I was, yeah. yeah, sometimes I was but, just kind of like a thing that she had to take care of. Yeah, you know, like, how you, you, know how you were talking about from three to six. How about in the summers from fucking eight to fucking six? Fucking lawless. Dude, time would lawless. stand still in the middle of some of those days. Lawless, my mom didn't let me stay home. Uh, I had to go to after school program until I was 11. So I wasn't allowed to be at home. And then I just then, went yeah. nuts. It was so much fun. But I also, uh, I was lucky enough that I was in like football. So I would go to like community. Some sort of structure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There'd be stuff where I could be like, or I'd stay at friends' houses. But um, yeah, my mom got us, our first house we bought was a like a three bedroom, two bath in uh my neighborhood in mission viejo like all along the perimeter which is now like i think that neighborhood's like starter homes for like a lot of family okay. which makes sense that's why my mom got it and then my mom uh got into a thing with my aunt about a little bit of money that was left by my grandparents <laughs> a thing dude oh, a man. thing with an aunt is always a yeah. dead giveaway You're oh, question garbage. number two have you ever fought with a family member <laughs> over money yeah dude well here Yikes. we go uh my mom was like hey you didn't give us any of that inherent inheritance and my aunt was like fuck you i think i don't know i was a kid when it happened sure. but my mom got my aunt to invest in this house uh that i lived in from when i was 10 to 18 it was really nice. It was a three bedroom, two and a half bath, and the clean living the right there. Inner circle. It's pretty nice. Three car garage. Three car garage. All right, you that bring is. it up. That's big. Kid that's, over that's, here. That's the biggest one we've had on the show. So I had a two car garage. All right, this is. I have a, there are a couple of. The the a was, garage is big. A big topic on this show. Yeah, so could you fit three cars big. in the garage, or was it filled with shit? Yeah, well, my stepdad was like a mechanic. My stepdad okay. was like a guy, okay. uh, Nick, that we moved into the house with. That was a big thing for him because he owned a house in like Denver proper in like the Montbello area. And he was selling his house because him and my mom were married. Gotcha. So he was like with that, with his, I think it was with his sold house, my mom and my and money for my aunt. They bought this house. And my stepdad was like, <laughs> that's some trashy. That's so shit. trashy, man. No, Dude, they're doing really, a, they're doing hey, in- <laughs> three way investment on it. <laughs> That's my like mom, the, ended, up, a, my mom a, ended up being the investor. I think she paid him off. Like it's time. a family timeshare right there. Like, I feel all, like, like getting all the aunts and uncles in on a house. Yeah, I feel like a little bit of your communion money was probably thrown in there too. <laughs> there was no communion. That never happened. They, Some Halloween candy on top yeah, of it. She uh, a college fund went, got That's siphoned great. into that. She, um, <laughs> but yeah, she, so she bought the house, and my stepdad. It was like a really big thing that he was like, I want a three car garage because he would build shit like he yeah built, so it was a functional garage yeah for sure he built yeah. my mom i this is the coolest shit and i should have spent more time in the garage with my stepdad nick because they were married from when i was like eight to eleven or eight to twelve they were I, they were married and he built my mom a 1970 mgb with just the body like started Jesus. with the body and then got all the pieces just, yeah Jesus. and then built it and then she sold it like fucking six years later so it was like he just built it he was like here i'm gonna make you a uh thirty thousand dollar car yeah here's a bunch of money that's fucking yeah, wild and, yeah she ended up selling it to my friend joel's dad just by chance which yeah. is random but, well the car sounds nice but a big staple question here on the podcast you say yeah. you have a three-car garage dan soder inside that garage did you have an extra refrigerator? Yeah, we had two. Ooh. What was in that refrigerator? Mean Dan Soder. Uh, we had we had two refrigerators. One was a meat freezer 
that, awesome. my mom, that my mom would buy meat at Costco and then just mm-hmm. put it all in the freezer and put like, you know, popsicles and shit. It was beautiful. Brown. There you go. Brown had an orange light button on the top, right? I remember. <laughs> and then we had a, uh, we brought our own refrigerator from our old house. And so that's we, always the second fridge is always like some scrap it's, fridge it's, it's, from it's, an uncle or something. Dude, you know it's somebody you say that? I What's just, in the second fridge? What's in the second fridge? Uh, like Hanson soda and Pepsi. <laughs> and, like, and then, like, uh, and then what's garbage. Funny is, yeah, the water was never hooked up. You know, so I remember people being like, I remember when we'd smoke so much weed in the fucking garage, and people would see that and be like, oh, there's a water thing, and they just, just hold it. Cup, and you'd be like, that thing's not hooked up to a hose. <laughs> Dude, that is such a trashy thing. I love it. Dude, I got – this is so funny. This is just bringing up a lot of memories. But I remember um, we were riding – me and the boys were out riding, smoking butts. <laughs> the goose is loose, baby. <laughs> Danny, is, Danny just, Sarah Goosa. Smoking you know I mean? cigs and jumping dirt mounds, baby. Just, That's what just, it was all about. Just a flock of geese coming down the fucking street. And I remember my friends did that thing, you know, when they'd be like, let's ditch him. And then they like, oh, right. ditch him oh. was huge. And like, duh, 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 duh. Fucking but I remember bastards. they were like, ditch him. I remember oh. Nick and Jason took a corner and they were like, let's ditch him. Let's go to his house and steal sodas. And I was like, Dude. what? And I was behind him. So I was like, <laughs> You know, like riding up. Dude, that, they dude, went up. Dude. They went up the garage and ghost rid the bikes onto the lawn, and then went into my ref, that refrigerator and were like taking sodas and putting in their shirt. And I remember I was like, it was half joke, half like serious. Yeah, so I fucking your cherry in. cokes, man. What the I, fuck? I ran in. I tried to tackle Nick, and he like got away. And then my friend Jason, I like, I like turned him around at the refrigerator, and he just fucking punched me in the mouth. Jesus. Just right as I turned him around, and he, I was bigger than him. And I remember I just grabbed him by the throat and pushed him against the meat refrigerator. And I was just like fucking choking him. Right. And he's like, ah, ah. and my stepdad hears all this and comes into the garage. And he's like, my stepdad was, Nick was big. He was like six, six, just he had a big, deep voice. And he was like, Daniel, let him go. I was just holding Jason by the throat and I let him go. And he was like, ah, fuck you. And like ran off. And then we were just friends the next day at the bus yeah, stop. Yeah, it's crazy. That's just, yeah, you, you, you fucking cleared it up over a Winston. Yeah, it's dude, crazy. I fucking, he rocked me and then I choked his ass. And then I was like, oh, fuck. But yeah, dude, two refrigerators. That's great. That might have been, that's exa- that we've been looking for that answer on this podcast. Since yeah, we started dude. doing this. You just described the garage fridge to in suburban team. America is fucking yeah. huge. We talk about it every episode, and that was the most perfect one. Yeah, Not through- to mention the fucking the, the meat freezer next to it where a guy got punched in the face. Yeah, I, I took care of him. I took care of him in the meat locker. Uh, or he took care of me. He if you're, if, if you've me. ever choked somebody out. On a meat fridge, you're yeah. trash. <laughs> yeah, dude. But if you if you live in the burbs and you don't have a soda fridge in your oh, house, what the fuck are you doing? What are you yeah. doing? Yeah. What are you doing? All right, let's see Go what ahead, I got Kim. here. Um, okay, anyone in your family or extended family own a kegerator? Uh, friends of family, not family. Okay, all right. But I've been, you know, I mean, I went to college. Dude, you know, that was the goal. That was the holy grail. If you walked into a party and they had a kegerator going. Woo! Yeah, I, uh, I know some friends of mine whose parents had one. Yeah. But I didn't, you know, it wasn't like no one in my family had it. Yeah. My family was a rum and coke family. Ooh. Aristocrats. Captain the, Morgan's? Uh, Bacardi. That's what the sodas drank. Oh, man. It was a glass of Bacardi with a splash of coke. And then my mom liked Southern Comfort Manhattans on the rocks. Ooh. Oh, God, a, Jesus. a lot of empty SoCo bins growing up. <laughs> I love her. She's good now. She's fine. She's great. I love you, Mom, if you're watching this. Growing up, did any friends of yours or family members that you know uh, get seriously injured in a dirt bike or ATV accident? Oh, um, dude, honestly, dirt bikes cost too much money. ATVs okay. and yeah. shit. Like, I think if anyone had that in – I didn't know anybody that had ATVs or dirt bikes where I grew up. Mm, okay. Did I you guys everybody play in the- has them in Colorado. Yeah, that's yeah, what no, I figured. I mean, like, people that live out in, like, Parker and, like, a place where you can maybe ride. Yeah, more rural, property, yeah. But not in Aurora. Not where I lived. People Anybody get seriously injured when you were riding your uh, riding your, your bikes back in the woods, oh, like, goose? jumping over things? Yeah. yeah. People got injured all the time. <laughs> I I was the guy that always got injured. Oh, I suck. Man. I have no, I'm, I'm not athletic. I, What's the scariest thing you ever jumped off on your bike when you were a kid? Dude, I, my cousin used to live. My cousin Luke. <laughs> Uh, for, you, for the, for the uh, listener, he just sat back on that. Like, Put God. his hand behind his head and little Winston, baby. Get into it. My cousin Luke, um, he grew up off the Highland Canal, which is in Littleton. Oh, it sounds like, trashy. Anybody no, no, buy a canal. Nice. 
like Littleton suburbs are nice. It's like okay. Little, like where Columbine is and stuff. This isn't where Columbine is, but he lived off the Hollywood Canal, and there was like these dirt jumps by his house. Awesome. Dude, and remember I, just stumbling upon dirt jumps in the woods that like the older kids had made or something? Uh, con- like, some exactly, construction site or something like that? That's exactly what this was. There was a construction site, and these, these guys had built a couple tables and a couple jumps, and I'm like, dude, this is fucking Tables? Awesome. <laughs> I haven't heard that in so fucking yeah. long. A table. And so they were, I was like, okay. And he's like, dude, they got these tables and these jumps around the house. And he's like, tell your mom to bring the mongoose out. So we put the mongoose in the back of the, in the, back of the 91 Forerunner because everyone in Colorado drives an SUV. And uh, went out to my cousin's house, and I remember we were so excited. We got our bikes. I put my shit in his room. We hung out, and then we rode to this fucking jump. And I remember seeing this jump, and I was like, dude, this is awesome. So you, like, go. You do the jump, and then you're supposed to, like, go to the right. I, like, did the jump, and then I went left, and I didn't realize that that was, like, the lip of another jump. Mm -hmm. So I went left, and then I just fucking – just face Ate first, it. just went over, and I remember just going over, being like, fuck, 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 and it was like, bam, my face hit the dirt, and I slid down, but then you're you're more embarrassed than you are hurt. Yeah. Like that. Seriously. Oh, yeah. So I just got up and was like, pah, pah, spin out dirt, and I'm like, I'm fine, <laughs> I'm fine, whatever, it's cool, and then it's like Luke and his friends, I don't know these friends, but I know my cousin, so I'm just like, have fun, oh, your friends think I suck, your friends think I suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too good. Uh, I love it. I knew we'd get to something. If it wasn't ATVs or dirt bikes, yeah. I knew there was some fucking dicey situations on the goose. the goose. Yeah. Go to the goose. All right. Go ahead, Kip. Uh, growing up, did you guys own a VCR slash DVD hybrid? Fuck you. We just had yeah. a VCR player. Dude, that was rich kid shit. You go yeah. over there. The Woo! First, first DVD player I got was a PlayStation 2. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Same here. Also, Never. another thing. Did you just have, did you ever own just the VHS Rewinder? Uh, no, but my friend Brian Mobley did. Shout yeah, out Brian dude, Mobley. Uh, my, my buddy, buddy had, had one that looked like a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, my <laughs> I buddy had one, one. I know exactly which one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you put it in like the trunk or whatever. Yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> Be kind, rewind. You have to. <laughs> dude, I remember showing it to my buddy's house and he broke it out. Like he got it for Christmas or something. And yeah, he, dude, that's what Brian he was, was like, like, I got it. And I, I thought I was at MGM Studios. I was like, what the, where are we? Brian almost ran me through it because this is when we lived in our old house. And he like ran me through it like uh, I got hired somewhere. He's like, this is, really like, this is uh, the tape rewinder. We rewind the tapes and we go to Blockbuster with mom. And she buys us candy and new tapes and sometimes. We like I worked somewhere. Yeah, something okay. to remember now. I got to tell all you new guys something to remember. Don't put the tape in backwards because you'll ruin the machine. Also, please un- <laughs> also please I don't know un- why they hired you to begin with, Dan, but guys, guys, I'm going to need you to unplug it when you're done using it. <laughs> I'm trying to burn down this house. Dude, that's all. It's- Soda, did you, I get the vibe. Did you ever work at a, at a video store? Uh, no, but I worked at a pizza place, which is like Ooh, hand in That's hand. right. Yeah. Hand Suburban hand. pizza place. And I would trade. Yeah. I worked at Pudge Brothers on Iliff and <laughs> uh, Buckley and I would trade pizzas for porn. <laughs> at the video Ooh. store in the parking lot. Oh, I take that's the guy fucking pizza. awesome. I take the guy a, a pizza. I'd make the pizza and I'd bring him a two liter. And then he would like let me be like, yeah, dude, go take like four DVDs. And I'd be like, How old were you? 16, 17. How old yeah. was the guy? 30s. He didn't yeah, give a fuck. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Playing it fast and loose, dude. Uh. Yeah, he was friends with my manager because we used to smoke joints in the back. And we all had the same like you know, all, the back of the store the back all was all like all open. Yeah. Yeah. It was all us. And it was like, that's where the delivery drivers parked. So we'd always be smoking joints out there. And then that guy came out. Like, the shitty you. suburban job, man, was Great. fucking the unbe- time literally stood still. It was yeah, unbelievable. It took, forever. It took forever. I remember getting off a shift there and being like, God, was that years? <laughs> years. Yeah. You just, I, feel like I just got off that. I feel like I just got off that shift. Thinking yeah. Like, there's shit. I got to make this one last run to this house near a Utah pool. And then I got to get <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got, Foley? Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, I, I waited tables for a long time as well. I know you waited tables in New York specifically. Sure. When you waited tables in New York, now this is a garbage move, but yeah. it's also an awesome move. Did you ever get stiffed on a tip and then chase the people out and be like, yo, what the fuck? Did you ever go after somebody that stiffed you on a tip? Um, we, we would have been fired immediately. Exactly. I know. That's, 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 that's the way you're But I would do the questioning. Gotcha. Passive aggressive questioning. Yeah. Is this, I just want to make sure this is all right. Mm -hmm. All right. The one that broke my heart was I waited on um, Common when he was dating Serena Williams. Okay. And it was like a $260 lunch bill. And I think we got like 10%. 
And I was like, oh. did he pay? Like he actually yeah. paid? Because you know how those pay. celebrities fuck you over is but some every, lackey put some lackey pays and screws you. No, no, no. Everyone else that paid celebrity wise, Tori Amos, Damon Wayans. There was a bunch of celebrities I waited on that were like, fine. I just yeah. think it might have been because it was a party. I don't know what's going on. They only I think they only had tacos and margaritas. Whatever. It was a bummer. It was a fucking bummer. But there there was one table I remember specifically. These we get a lot of Europeans. I waited tables right wow. as the right as the O eight right as the O eight crash happened. So I was waiting tables from like two thousand seven to two thousand eleven. And so the crash was right there and Americans stopped going out to eat, but Europeans were like their money was yeah. twice what ours was. Mm-hmm. I had these like Romanian women, I think. Here in Eastern Europe, and it was a late dinner, and it was like a fucking ninety dollar bill, and I was just like, I know you're not gonna give me eight, you're not gonna give me eighteen bucks, you're not gonna give me twenty bucks. So I just kept being like, Do you not speak English? Because they're like, That's all real, that's all we shut. I was like, (laughs) and then I started saying shit under my breath because I'd get frustrated. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, Can you bring that? I'm like, Here's a check. It's not like you're gonna tip me. All right, you guys have a good one. I just talk fast if I knew someone couldn't speak English because I would just want to talk shit to them, and I'd be like. (laughs) Man, gonna be like you're gonna fucking take care of me or whatever and i went back and they left me a 40 percent tip and i was like ah. oh. that was like gar- i felt garbage for that yeah like, oh, yeah that's, that's shitty i had uh, conan, conan left me a dollar once uh, on what how much uh it Cup was of probably coffee. Like 40 or 50 bucks conan <laughs> that's Fuck, tough man yeah, the big guy iced me. This is this was years ago this was when i lived up here the first time before i waited tables it was yeah. on the upper east side yeah, dude, you'd really see a lot of people with a lot of money don't know how to tip. If I ever get that show, don't think I'm not bringing it the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> the second I'm done, hey, Red, like, let me talk to you backstage yeah, for a minute. Yeah, hey, stretch. <laughs> Where the fuck was the rest of that tip? Yeah. Um, all right, I got one. Um, are you good at uh, either of the following tailgate games known as washers or bago? Cornhole. Corn, you would cornhole? Know it. cornhole. Yeah. I feel like cornhole came out after I was drinking. Okay. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's, Cornhole came out right as I was quitting drinking in 2012, 2013. Okay. It's played professionally now. I and know. Coincidentally, how I know that is because ESPN has nothing to show. And last night I watched about 20 minutes of a fucking Cornhole tournament. It was pretty great. Was oh, pretty great. my I God. I was beer pong. I was big into Beirut. Beer, beer pong. yeah. Beirut, that was huge when I was yeah. in fucking college, man. Loved it. Loved All right. It. Do me a favor. Rank these. From least garbage to most garbage, the following items. Ready? Sure. And there is an order. Sure. Potato salad, egg salad, chicken salad, seafood salad. One being the least garbage. Wait, and it's chicken, tuna, seafood, and what else? Chicken, egg, potato, seafood. No tuna. Chicken, potato, <laughs> egg, seafood. Yes. Chicken, potato, egg, seafood. What comes first, chicken or the egg? Yay, <laughs> we're having fun. I would say the least classy is seafood salad. Excellent. Okay. And what's the second least classy? Egg salad. Awesome. Next. Chicken salad. Mm, chicken oh, salad's potato, number one. It's potato salad. Potato, potato salad. chicken. Yeah, potato potato can go either way because if you make it with Miracle Whip, it's got some snap on it, but um, pretty tra- it's trashier. Beautiful. Right to the follow-up question. Growing up, was it Hellman's or Miracle Whip? No, I did Hellman's. Okay. Nice. But, but as I grew older... He's as not I an asshole. Older, yeah, yeah. As I grew older, I learned to like Miracle Whip, but hated it when I was a kid. When Lord. you were a kid, you'd go to somebody's house and saw Miracle Whip. You'd be like, oh, I'll just take a peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, yeah. you're like, I'm good. But you <laughs> Hellman's? I can eat a spoon of Hellman's. Woo! It's nothing wrong with it. And it was called Best Foods on the West Coast. That was the oh, name was. of the... Yeah, it wasn't Hellman's mayonnaise. It was Best Foods. So, so the song wasn't the bring out the Hellman's and bring out the best. It was bring out the best foods and bring out the best. Wait, 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 what? wait. What? Look it they up, stole the jingle? No, they were the same company. They just different marketing. Yeah, it was it's just. Like, the- it's like how Carl's Jr. is Carl's Jr. on the West Coast, but it's Hardee's on the gotcha. East Coast. Oh, you know my I mean? mind is fucking blown. Yeah. It's all been a lie. Hellman's is an international. Nah, man, Hellman's, I think it is now. I don't think they call it Best Foods anymore, but growing up, it was definitely Best Foods. Wow, that's fucking, and they would do the same song. Same jingle, dude. 
Bring out the, uh, I haven't heard that. Now. I haven't heard that jingle in fucking twenty years. Yeah, that was a blast like, from the past. That there's, thing. All, there's all this mayonnaise hate going around. You guys could fucking suck my dick. <laughs> hot fructose mayonnaise. Talk. Well, that would that was perfect. I mean, the heart of that question is really just to find out where your thoughts are on seafood salad. Now it's oh, garbage. It's, it's I trash. love it. I love it. Do you seafood. like imitation? Damn, do yeah. Do you eat imitation crab meat, Dan? Yes, yes, I will. Ah, uh, come but on. See, seafood salad really? too dicey. Oh, like, yeah. will you go? You'll go buy like a package of it and just like eat it. My girlfriend was horrified yesterday because I said I loved shrimp cup of noodles. Oh my I god! I loved the shrimp cup of noodles. The little, the little piece of shrimp in there, oh, man. It ain't scrimp. Scrimp. No, it scrimps. My stepdad installed a hot water nozzle in our house, so you. Oh, could, the Insta Hot. Insta Hot. So. I loved cup of noodles, and I would just pour that Insta Hot, let it sit, and just have a fucking cup of noodles. Dude, Insta Hot in the house is fucking. That's Christ. that ain't to, too shabby, right there. To one of your friends doesn't know and is drunk and burns his hand. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He'll sneak up on you. Fuck. Oh my god, right, we just got a few more questions here. Uh, this is you awesome. Go. You're doing great, Kippy. Go ahead. Yeah, have you ever been to a wedding at a VFW? No, no, but VFWs aren't really a West Coast, like a Colorado thing. Uh, is that an East Coast them. thing? Yeah, till East Coast. Have you ever been to a wedding? Where all the Patriots live, baby. Yeah, we do like uh, cheap golf courses mm, or course. apartment um, apartment clubhouses. Yeah, like the oh, the commonplace. Yeah. That's that's bad too. Yeah, I've been to one of those. Hanging up like balloons in the corner. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had yeah, my aunt's fortieth birthday party at the townhouse. Or at uh, Town Lines Town Clubhouse. Dude, we do the Christmas party every year at my mom's uh, fucking townhouse. Oh, uh, man. Meeting, meeting oh, that's <laughs> fucking trash. Oh, dude, I, I love, love it. it. Yeah. Hey, Dan, good to see you. How's everything in New oh, York? A lot of those conversations are had in fucking oh. in the clubhouse. There's tape from the other parties still up oh, on the wall in the corner and shit. Still a balloon from a birthday party the week before. <laughs> yeah, a couple of different colored napkins from a christening. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Follow you go. Uh, do you have anything reversible? Do you wear anything reversible? Dude, come on. My favorite fucking thing in the world was my reversible Jerry Rice jersey growing up. <laughs> it would be fucking red. It'd either be home or the black with the gold numbers. Come yeah. on. Dude. I had a ton of reversible shit. Okay. Where do these two items belong? An open bottle of ketchup belongs in A, the fridge, or B, the cabinet? Fridge. Yes. Excellent. An open bottle of syrup goes in the cabinet or the fridge? Cabinet. Excellent. All right. Very two classy answers. I like it. I got another one. Butter. Fridge or out? My mom kept it out. I yes. kept it in the fridge. No, you got to go fridge all day long. Fridge it's dairy, day, dude. It's, it's dairy. dairy. My mom, dude, my mom would keep the butter in this thing in the fucking cupboard. I was yeah, man. Like, mm -hmm. the butter, and now I'm like, what? what, what <laughs> dude, that's, dude, that's literally insane. It's yeah. garbage, but how great is it to fucking put nice warm butter on? Oh. There's no struggle. Oh, on the roll? Come on. I, I would draw the line. I, I think you, could keep, you can't keep it out overnight. Maybe if you wake up in the morning, you leave it out, Shit. you have it for breakfast, lunch, talk, dinner. But the, overnight, it sleeps in the fridge. Talk to my mom, dude. She had that was, It only stayed outside. It was an outside dog. That butter <laughs> was an outside dog. I like it. I fucking love it, man. And I'm, oh, man. I'm a huge butter guy. I fucking love that. How do you feel about Hawaiian pizza? Ugh. Yeah. Garbage? Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, have you ever added a muffler racing or racing stripes to a car? Nah, man. I uh, I had the eighty eight Honda Accord hatchback, and then nice. I, uh, it it broke. It broke down, and then mm -hmm. my mom and I bought. I ended up paying her off, but I uh, she split a Dodge Stratus with me in ninety six. Oh! What Stratus. color was that Dodge Stratus, Dan? White. Yes, fifty fifty. They only I think they only made them in white, dude. Those <laughs> things were you were. You Fucking utilitary. So my mom, uh, you know, like the senior trip, how everyone goes on a senior trip. Mm -hmm. Like all my friends went to Mexico after they graduated. It was like a graduation uh, gift. Yeah. That was like a graduation gift from a lot of the parents. Were like, oh, you guys can go to Cancun on this trip. It was, uh, and my mom was like, for graduation, I'm gonna let you go to Mexico. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. You know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for the trip. And I was like, that's fucking great. Sweet. And then she got the check in late, or something happened, or the check bounced. Something happened where she's like, you can't go. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what the but fuck, I, man? But I had a loan out for this car. You know, like she helped me buy the Stratus, and mm -hmm. so she was really cool about it. And she's like, hey, since you can't go on the trip, I'm gonna pay for half of the Stratus. And I was ah, like, oh, that ain't too shabby. Right. Long yeah, run, that's better. For well, sure. Way, way better. Way better. Yeah. I ended up selling that car to move to New York in 2007. So it was way better. Dang. What did, did, a, you, uh, what did oh, a Stratus run back then? Uh, 3,500. Not bad. 
Not bad. Not bad. Not too shabby. Did you put yeah. a head unit in that bad boy? I had, I, yeah, I put, I put a, I put a CD player in. It yeah, was a, it was you did. Blown out speakers. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> all, all of that shit. Yeah. The car reeked like cigarettes when I sold it. Oh yeah. Looking back on the CD, how much of a fucking pain in the ass were they, man? You Dude, maybe those got big books. Oh, those big robbed. books sucked. I got, ro- I got robbed in Tucson in 2004, and they took a 200 fucking CD booklet out of my car. I was very upset about that. Did you ever know anybody? I thought this was real garbage, but everybody got it eventually. Anybody who had the CD changer in the trunk, yep, where they had like the forty-five loader. Yep, I had two friends that had. The dude, you had to like pull changes. over and shit to change the CDs. You're like, what the fuck? I just want to listen to some Eminem, dude. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, they'd pull it out like it was a fucking server. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, was, like, all right, let's load it back up. I got the files. Yeah. Fucking safety deposit box in the fucking trunk, man. Fucking crazy. All right, I think I only got one more here. Um, oh, this was a big one in the '90s. I feel. Would you? Uh, would your parents ask for a receipt at the toll booth? Oh, uh, my mom asked for receipts on everything. Yeah, my dad <laughs> would be like, "Pay the pay a thirty five cent toll and ask for a receipt." I'm like, "What the fuck are we doing with this?" Dude, my mom's all about receipts. All <laughs> so about receipts. so crazy to me. Loves the receipts. I love it. All right, my final question, Kippy. You got one more? Uh, no, you're good, buddy. Uh, is a two part question. Number one. Uh, I believe this is a Kippy from a, this is Kevin's from an earlier episode. Have you ever purchased anything with Marlboro Miles? Oh. No, but. Uh, what did you do with the camels? Camel dollars I had a lot of, and then I lost them. I lost them when I moved from Aurora to Tucson because I had been smoking for a while, and I was like, I'll get some cool camel light shit, and then I lost them in the move. I was very okay. upset about that. Very, yeah. very upset about that because I had a lot of camel dollars. That makes dad, it garbage. My dad had a <laughs> shit ton of Marlboro Miles. Yeah. My dad had so many Marlboro Miles. <laughs> I know. He Sitting back is great. He's in therapy right now. <laughs> yeah, I fucking dude. love it. Dude, if you remember, had the Marlboro sleeping bag at a sleepover in junior high, you were the fucking shit. I know we had the cooler. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I the know Wrangler had, Jeep. And the thermos. Oh, the thermos was big, too. Mm. Yeah, the Marlboro thermos was definitely. They had big. that suede jacket that was going around a lot, Come too. Come on. The pool that table? Was, dude. Did you ask uh, that? that was, one of those. That was another question. Did you ever grow up with a foosball table, a ping pong table, or a pool table? Pool table that we bought at the Mile High Flea Market. Oh. Was it full size or one of the smaller ones? Full size, old school, fucking concrete, three pieces of concrete. My stepdad and my mom bought it at the flea market. And that's we put it down right. in the basement. But our basement was hurt that you couldn't take shots. So oh, yeah. that's garbage, ah. man. That's ah. garbage. Ah. You're like the maestro in there. Yeah, the yeah, place dude. to be. <laughs> oh. But it was fun. It was fun as fuck. My All mom right. and I got good at pool for a while. My final question on the tip of the uh, the Marlboro Miles is, did you have a uh, subscription to Sports Illustrated when you were a kid? Of course. Of course. And? Of course. Sports Illustrated for kids when I started, and then Sports Illustrated. Side kids, yeah. I just told, or I I might answer your question right here. I just told my girlfriend about this story. We were watching, uh, she and I were watching The Last Dance, Mm -hmm. and I was like, "Listen, I'm a, I'm a kind of a hoarder. Like I keep shit. I hold on to things." What do you got? From the time I was, fuck, like eight years old on, I got Sports Illustrated. So when I got Sports Illustrated for when I was eight, I would save the big covers. I would be like, oh, this is important. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put it in my closet. And then I had a box. And then I had this fucking massive box of all old Sports Illustrated. And when my mom moved to her townhouse, she was like, yeah, I got rid of them. I didn't think you wanted them. I'm like, oh. I had fucking Jordan retiring the first time. Jesus. I had fucking Montana getting traded to the Chiefs. I had all these like crazy fucking big moments in sports and my mom was like, yeah, I gave them away. I was like, what, what the fuck? <sighs> I would have lost it. Dude. That's when that, devastating. Dude. When that Sports Illustrated would come, man, me and my brother, it was like the fuck. I, I remember like specific cover headlines, like the yeah. incredible bust. And yeah. like this dude, it was fucking unbelievable because there was no internet, no nothing like that. Yeah. I would read, we, we would literally look at the pictures and read them like a hundred times. But my I, final question to you, Mr. Dan uh, Soder, yeah. did you ever have the Sports Illustrated windbreaker or football phone? Didn't got neither, but loved the football joke in Wayne's World too. Loved the joke in Wayne's World too about the Sports Illustrated football. No, I pull it. Never got it. Yeah, uh, when he goes and visits the naked Indian man with Jim Morrison, and he's like, "Your phone got misdelivered. It'll be there." Oh yeah, Sports uh, Illustrated uh, phone. <laughs> yeah, dude. I um. How I did you never get? How did you never get either one of those? 
I don't know. We always just had a Sports Illustrated subscription, but I remember I broke my shoulder when I was 14 uh, playing freshman football because I sucked. <laughs> I, uh, I remember I had to go to the hospital and they gave me morphine. And I remember I was back home. <laughs> oh, and this, I specifically Jesus. remember what Sports Illustrated was. It was Peyton Manning's senior year at Tennessee. And th- it was a cartoon drawing of Peyton Manning wrestling a cartoon uh, Florida Gator. Yeah, and, I remember that. And I was so fucked up on morphine and then Percocets uh, that I would like, I read the whole Sports Illustrated. I was like, I knew Sports Illustrated. It was fucking great. I love Sports Illustrated. And then I remember like uh, the next day accusing my mom's boyfriend of stealing the Sports Illustrated. I was like, I was like, I, there's no Sports Illustrated. And he was like, yeah, I gave you the Sports Illustrated. I was like, you're lying to me. And I was like, and now I'm like, yeah, dude, I was on morphine. I don't fucking yeah, right. You're fucking tripping balls. Yeah, dude, I was out of it. That's great. Wait, so there was no Sports Illustrated? There was. I uh, I lost it in between my bed and the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Houston, fucking, the stepdad, is stealing it. That's yeah, awesome. While well, you're playing. yacked up on morphine. I'm like, you fucking want me to look Yeah, I Oh, my God. That is too funny. Dan Soder, man. Thank you for sitting down with us. Uh, yeah, thank you for him. playing Are You Garbage. I got to say, 100% garbage, but the Garbaggio. Of it, I fucking love it, man. Yeah, I don't know. I think I grew up. I grew up, uh, you know, I think I grew up okay. Absolutely. Of 100%. course, of course, of course. I think you should eat shitty and have shitty things happen to you when you're young so you can appreciate the good things when you're older. I'm always under the impression, even though I hate it doing it, and it's my biggest fear to go back to it. But don't you feel like everybody should have to wait tables for at least yeah. two months? Very humbling. The world very, would be a completely different place. It's a very humbling experience for someone to complain that you haven't brought them their iced tea. Yeah. Yeah. It's very humbling yeah. for them Good. to be like, you're a servant bringing my <laughs> shit. Like, yeah. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right. I want right. to yeah. fight you, but I also want to keep my lights on. So uh, yeah. You. Well, look at it now, baby. It's all behind you, kid. You're doing absolutely well, fantastic. You know, now stand-up doesn't exist anymore, but we're getting back. <laughs> we're getting back. They just did shows in uh, Wise Guys, I saw. Crazy. This we'll weekend. See. We'll see. Let's, uh, let's stay safe out there. But thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Thank man. You, buddy. Is there anything it. you want everybody out there to know? Anything? Listen, you want? listen to the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Monday through Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. Check out Billions. Uh, we've we got new episodes coming out uh, every Sunday at 9 on Showtime. And please stream my HBO special, Son of a Gary. Beautiful. Uh, Thank you so much, buddy. You're the best. We appreciate you. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you, man. Thanks, Later, buddy. guys. See, See you, buddy. Man. Fucking outside fridges for life. Yeah, That's garage right. fridge. Garage fridge. Guys, thank you so much. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode of Are You Garbage? Uh, Kippy, you got anything for him? Yeah, please make sure uh, you rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. The full video is available on YouTube. Please subscribe there. Uh, if you want to submit any of your own questions for Are You Garbage, um, a lot of you are commenting on YouTube and stuff like that. You can, but they'll get lost. So please send them to areyougarbage at gmail.com. Uh, also, I am at Kevin Ryan on all social media. And I am at H Foley on ice on Twitter and at Foley Grams on Instagram. Uh, and make sure you subscribe to Are You Garbage on Twitter and subscribe to Are You Garbage on Instagram. As we said, uh, great episode, man. I, I, I had that vibe that he was that, you know, that's kind of where he came from in the bits yeah, and for pieces sure. that I've picked up. I fucking loved it, man. It was great. It was a good episode. Great job. Kippy, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys very soon. Thanks, guys. See ya.